Good day and hello everyone. I am Christian Renzi Priano of BSECE 1A. In this video, I will be discussing some of the concepts and properties of integration that we are going to use in our topics for this discussion, which are the U substitution and the change of limit or interval in evaluating integrals. To begin with, we must understand first the relationship between differentiation and integration. Yes, these two are inverse operations, in the way that integration itself requires the differentiation of a function before it will be evaluated. For basic functions, it is just easy, but it gets complicated when the functions become more complex. That's why we are going to use the process of U substitution and change of interval. Hoping we are now familiar with the steps in evaluating a simple integral. Are you now ready? If yes, then let's proceed for our first topic for this discussion, which is the U substitution. Remember, U substitution is used in evaluating integrals that has complex functions, such as composite functions or those functions that cannot be integrated directly. For us to understand it well, let's have an example. Let's try some trigonometric functions. Suppose we have this definite integral of cotangent x to the fifth power multiplied to cosecant x to the third power dx from the interval of pi over 4 to pi over 2. What do you think will be our first step? Yes, that's right. Let's simplify it first. But why? Because this function seems to have a large value, and we know some trigonometric identities to help us simplify it. Since cotangent x is raised to the fifth power, and using the trigonometric identities, we only have cotangent x raised to 2. So, we can strip out one cotangent x from it, and using the loss of exponent, we can have cotangent of x raised to 2 quantity squared times, since we strip out cotangent x, one cotangent x from it, we will multiply it here. Multiply to cosecant x raised to 3 dx from the interval pi over 4 to pi over 2. Then, in trigonometric identities, cotangent squared x is equal to is equal to cosecant squared x less 1 squared times cotangent x per second x cubed dx. Then we can proceed to the process of u substitution. We can let u as cosecant x. And we know that the derivative of cosecant x is, or our du, is equal to negative cotangent x cosecant x dx. And let's find dx. Our dx will become du over the negative cotangent x cosecant x. Now what we need to do is to write the whole integral in terms of u. And now we'll, let's substitute dx from the value, from its value du over negative cotangent x cosecant x. x 
And now, we can cancel some of the terms. We can cancel cotangent x and the denominator cotangent x. Since our u cube is also equal to cosecant x cube, we can cancel one of the one from it and cosecant x from here. This will become u squared. Now, let's rewrite our o. o. Don't forget the now let's rewrite our function the intervals and our function since we have negative here and our u squared will become negative multiply to this one u squared minus 1 quantity square, and the du. Using the constant multiple rule of integration, we can rewrite this function as, or by moving the negative sign or the negative 1 before the integral sign. And what we need to do next is to expand this term using the FOIL method. Then, let's distribute u squared from the result of this one using the distributive property of multiplication. u squared raised to 2 is u to the 4th times u squared is u to the 6th. u to the 6th power. And, using FOIL method, the second term will be 2u squared times u squared is equal to this is minus 2u to the fourth. And, of course, since this is positive 1, using the file method, this will become positive 1. Positive 1 multiplied to u squared is u squared. Let's get rid of this negative sign here. So, using the distributive property of multiplication, we multiply it to the terms of the function. With this one, this will become negative u to the power of 6, positive 2 to the power u to the power of 4, then this will become negative u squared. As you can see, this function has three terms. So, using the sum rule of the integration, we can separate the three of them, but with the same intervals. And using the constant multiple rule, let's move the negative sign before the integral sign of the u6 or u to the power of 6 plus or don't forget the du and also as you can see in the second term it also has a constant or a numerical coefficient of 2 so using the constant multiple rule this will become plus 2 pi over 2 pi over 4 u to the 4th du minus pi over 2 pi over 4 and the u squared D. for our next step we can use the power rule of integration using the power rule u to the power of 6 will become yes that's right u to the power of 7 over 7 plus and this will become u to the power of 5 over 5 minus u to the power of 3 over 3. Don't forget our intervals. As you can remember, our u is equal to the cosecant x. So, 
let's substitute it back. Since we are now set, we can solve for our f of b, given our b is pi over 2. What we need to do is substitute pi over 2 in every x variables. Since we are solving with di trigonometric, we can use our calculator. Again, our cosecant pi over 2 is 1, raised to 7 is 1, divided by 7, negative 1 over 7, plus cosecant pi over 2 is 1, raised to 5 is 1, divided by 5, times 2 is 2 over 5. And 1 raised to 3 is 1 over 3 is 1 third. And this is equal to negative 8 over 105. This is the value of our f of b. Now, we can proceed to our f of a. Again, cosecant pi over 4 is equal to square root of 2. When you raise it to 7, using your calculator, this will become negative 8 square root of 2 over 7 plus 2 times square root of 2 raised to 5 divided by 5 is it's also 8 square root of 2 over 5 s pi over 2 raised to 3 divided by 3 is 2 square root of 2 divided by or over 3. And if you're going to solve for this, this is equal to negative 22 square root of 2, 105. So, we now have the value of our f of a, which is pi, or which is 22 square root of 2 over 105, and that is a negative 1. So, let's just subtract this one from 8 over, or negative 8 over 105, which is our f of b. This will become positive. So, using your calculator, using your calculator, this is equal to 0 0.22, 0 0.2201, or just equal to 0 0.22. So, in summary, the value if we are going to integrate this function, cotangent x raised to the 5th power, cosecant x raised to the 3, raised to 3, is equal to 0 0.22. And that's all for the process of u substitution, and now we'll proceed to the next topic, which is the change of interval. Our next topic is change of interval. But why is there a need to change the limit of our integrals? Simply, because our function must also change. Values of our original limit only refers to the limits of the function in terms of x. And since we use the u substitution here, the function is now written in terms of u. That makes sense, right? Let's try to understand it well using this example. Okay, suppose we have this example. 
the definite integral of 2 multiplied to e raised to x. e stands for the Euler's number. e to the power of x plus 1 dx. And from the interval, negative infinity to 0. So what do you think will be our first step? Yes, that's right. We need to use the process of u substitution. We can let u is or equal to e to the power of x plus 1. And we all know that the derivative of this one is simply e to the power of x. So du is equal to e to the power of x dx. And dx is also equal to du over e to the power of x. And now, what we need to do next is to change the limit or the interval of this function. To do this, we need to find first the upper limit and the lower limit. Solving for lower limit is we need to use the value of u, which is e to the power of x plus 1. This is lower limit. U is equal to e to the power of x plus 1. Since the lower limit in this integral is the negative infinity, so we need to substitute negative infinity in terms of x. And that will become e to the power of negative infinity plus 1. Again, e stands for Euler's number. And it has a specific value. And there is a rule states that any number raised other any number other than 1 or 0 raised to negative infinity, the answer is always 0. So this is this will become 0 plus 1 add this one this will become 1 that is our lower limit let's move to our upper limit the same with the lower limit we need to use the value of u or the e to the power of x plus 1 And since our upper limit here is 0, we need to substitute it from here. Any number raised to 0 is always equal to 1. So 1 plus 1 is 2. And now we can rewrite our integral using this set of limits. In, and in terms of u. So definite integral of 2e raised to x over u from the interval upper limit is 2 while the lower limit is 1. And multiply the value of dx which is du over dx. By this, e to the power of x will be eliminated. And that will become we can also rewrite this one. And by this, we can apply the constant multiple rule of integration. Our next step is to find the antiderivative of our function. Our function is 1 over u. So what do you think is the antiderivative of this one? Yes, that's right. The antiderivative of 1 over u is the natural logarithm of the absolute value u.
natural logarithm or ln absolute value of u and write and write our newer limits which is the 2 and 1 or the interval from 1 to 2 what we need to do next is to simply solve for our f of b minus f of a to do that we need to substitute the values of 2 and 1 from 2 times the natural logarithm of u f of b minus f of a and now we'll use our calculator to evaluate it. 2 multiplied to natural logarithm of absolute value 2 is equal to 1.386, approximate 1.386 thousands, minus the value of 2 times the natural logarithm of 1 is 0. So, our final answer is 1.386 or 1.39. Calculus had been very helpful to mankind. It can tell us about the motion of astronomical bodies, weather patterns, electronic systems, and many more. So, what do you think our life would be without the discovery of this field? And how can you differentiate it with today's way of life? Comment it down below and I'll be glad to read it. That's all for today's discussion. Thank you for the time. Take care and goodbye.